right, welcome to the lesson today. My name is Farid. Um, they call me Farid. It's really Fred or Friedrich. And I'm the author of the one on Most Used Verbs, and I'm also the director of CG Jordan um, here. It's an institute uh, in Jordan for Arabic language. Uh, we're going to talk about today a lesson on, it's really a tutorial more than anything else, how to do the notebook method. Um, the notebook method is uh, a unique way of learning and retaining the Arabic that you're going to uh, hear on the street, in your class, anywhere you go. And this is really about language acquisition. And so a lot of students put a lot of thought into where they're going to study, what they're going to use, uh, like curriculum wise, um, how the study uh, is situated, whether it's you know, if it's uh, walking around the street learning this or that, or in a classroom, um, GPA versus uh, traditional uh, methods. Um, so all of this, though, really, although it's important, it's not really at more important than what we're going to talk about now, which is overlooked by most all students. Um, if it's not overlooked, it's done, they simplify it so much to where it's not, uh, it's not very helpful because they'll be writing down words or phrases in class and then they may or may or not look over them. And so, so um, that, a lot of these words, vast majority of these words, are not really picked up. They're in the notebook, they're on the paper, they're written in the book, or even worse, they're just heard and then quickly forgotten. So how do we retain, how do we acquire the, ver the, the verbs, nouns, adjectives, phrases, sentences that we need um, and keep those in our heads? Well, with Arabic, it's not like the Romance languages, French, Spanish, Italian, you know, these languages and others that are, they have maybe sounds that are similar to the English, words that are similar to the English. In Arabic, you very seldom have that luxury. So you really have to have a system of review, of review for these words to get them. So um, we're going to talk about the notebook method. Obviously, in the notebook method, we're using a notebook. And this is uh, one of my, it's probably one of my first notebooks. Maybe it's my second notebook I used uh, when I started about 18 years ago. And you can see this is a fairly small notebook. It doesn't have to be large, but each and every student to use the notebook method, you really need to have a notebook that's no smaller than this. Um, you can possibly get one anywhere from this size. This is a later notebook I used here. As you can tell, this notebook is um, slightly larger, but you can get all the way up to A4 size or 8.5 by 11 size notebook. Um, but keep in mind, you're going to be carrying this notebook around everywhere you go, especially if you're in an immersion environment like here in Jordan. Now, uh, notice that in this notebook, we have, I like the spiral because you can put a pen there and you can have a pen ready to go. Uh, the idea with a notebook is that quickly you want to be able to open it up, you want to be able to write down the word that you hear. Um, or if you have, a, you want to say something and you can't say it, you just, you don't want to forget that moment, write it down, and then that way you can ask later on, what is that in Arabic, um, and have it. So your notebook is really basically, it's two, going to be two sides. And you've got the first side, which is your English, I call it the English side. We write left to right. And that's going to be this. Normally, what we would, when we open up a book, we open it up from here and we read. So, this will be your collection side. The English side will be your collection side, or another term I use is rough draft side. So, that will be for collecting words. Um, and you can do that, you can collect words anywhere. You can collect words in class, out of class, in the taxi, in the street, in the restaurant, anywhere you're at, you can collect words. Um, the other side, which is the Arabic side, this is the final draft side, or what I call the review side. This side is going to be your polished side. It's going to have, it's going to have your words and phrases with your dates, and we're going to talk about that in a moment. But here's the thing: some students have come to me and said, "Well, 
I like to do it, the way I like to do it is I just, I go on my computer and I write them up or I have my phone, I have a smartphone and I'll just type it in. My phone has Arabic or whatever. Well, all smartphones do have Arabic, yes. But how, how really, how convenient and how easy is it to type in Arabic, especially when it's not your first language? Also, how easy is it to do the harakat, which are the little accents, you know, that Arabic has, which are so, so important for you to get the proper pronunciation. That, I say, is very difficult. And sometimes we end up spending more time preparing to study than we actually do studying. So you want to avoid that at all costs. Spend less time in the preparation to study or to review and more time in your actual reviewing. And that's the winning strategy. So if you're inclined for technology, you want to use your phone, you want to use your computer, I would say put that off, especially in the beginning, because you really want uh, to focus your attention also on writing the word out with your own handwriting and getting used to you know, mastering how to write in Arabic. Um, of course, in the beginning, you're not going to have uh, the ability to write, at least in the first maybe week or two, uh, for our program, our students can't really write in Arabic if they're beginners. So what we have them do is we'll have them do, we'll teach them a, um, a way of writing Arabic in, with English letters that helps them. It's a type of transliteration, if you will. So let's say you have the word man, or let's say you have the word um, rah, okay? So there's two H's. Rah means, um, it means he went. So, um, if we write the word, it will be like this. Okay, well, actually, let me get this here. It'll be with an R, Ra, and then a, an A and another A, okay? And then a capital H because it has that ha sound. So, Arabic has two H's, they have a regular ha. Um, that w that's used, like the American um, ha, or English ha. And then you have the ha, which is the coming from the throat, ha. That is what's used in this word. The Arabic would be ra, okay? However, if you don't know the letters, you have to start with this system first. But we quickly want students to move out of this and into this because this is much more accurate and it will help a student to understand how to speak. And if you can see the word and visualize it um, in the Arabic, it's very helpful. So just a word on transliteration in Arabic. But right now, I'm going to use transliteration for new students and I'll use a little bit of Arabic script so you can see uh, just in case you're watching this and you already have uh, the alphabet down. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start. Let's look at the review side of your notebook, which is the English side. Okay. So the key is on this side is just to collect things that you hear. So let's say you hear um, you hear the word um, wanted. You keep hearing the word wanted. All right, which is this. And in the script, it would be or in transliteration, it would be like this. Will it? Very simple. Will it? Okay. Will it? All right. Now, will it? You don't know what that means. You think it means boy or guy or man because it's used. Uh, you hear it used for uh, for kids. So you think it may be kid or boy or something. And you would actually be right. It is boy. So we we can put if we think we know it, we put boy on the left side. So, let's just say this is a piece of, this is your notebook, okay? And this is your left, this is your, uh, the right side of your notebook, and this is the left side. So you're going to put the English here, or the Arabic here. Now, if you don't know what it means at all, you can just put wallet there. That's simple as that. No problem. Um, no problem at all. Let's just say you hear the word, um, uh, rah, like we just saw. OK. 
okay? You'll just put it here. Rah. And if you mess up here, it's okay. You don't, this is the rough draft side, so it doesn't need to be perfect. What we've seen in the past when we do evaluations with students is that they will, uh, they will learn things incorrectly. And a lot of that uh, is because they don't have a system to filter out the words that they, either it's spelled incorrectly, um, or they, uh, which leads to wrong pronunciation, or they don't know the proper meaning, um, uh, or they don't know the context. So this uh, is just your rough draft. You're not looking for perfection. You're just looking to get it down so you don't forget to then look at it and, and put it on your, on, your rough, on your final draft side, which is your review side. So let's just take a few others here. Let's say you want to learn, you, you don't know the word for car, and you really want to know the word for car. This works both ways. Not only do you hear Arabic words and you write them down, but you also can say car. You want to learn the word car. So you put it here, and then later you can get it and then move it into your review side, final draft side. So you hear the word car. Well, you also want to know how to say hello. So you write down the word hello. So this works on either side. Let's go with another one. You want to say, how are you? Okay. And um, you hear somebody, they say, well, how do you say, how are you? So you say, you say, kifuk. Okay. Kifuk. So let's say they write it down for you. They'll even write it down for you. Okay. So there it is. They'll write it down. And that's their handwriting. And they wrote it down in your notebook. So many different ways. You can give the notebook and say, can you write that down for me, that word? Um, Arabs love to help. They love to be helpful. They, um, they see it as an honor to help people Mo most of the time. I mean, you have some people that are very busy, and maybe you might get, uh, you know, they might give you a look like, well, I don't have time. But for the most part, Arabs are very helpful, especially, especially to foreigners and guests. So don't hesitate to ask people as well to do that if you if you like, or you can just write it yourself. You can just put it here. You know, kif. You know, kifak. All right, like that. Okay, that's transliteration. All right, so your rough draft side. Last thing I'll say about this: you've got the words here, or phrases. You want to keep in mind that it, at your level, if you're a beginner or you're an immediate, you'll already be grabbing things that are according to your level because you won't know them, but sometimes you'll get stuff that's kind of complicated. So the beauty of this is that you can write here, you can actually do this. You can actually check, um, you can actually hit, put a check on the things that you've already gotten. So you want to know these, okay? You want to know these. So you might put a check over here, all right? All these you want to know. But let's say you get a word, somebody gives you a word, and they say, um, it's a uh, mustahil. Okay, you hear the word mustahil. Well, that sounds strange, that word. I'm going to write it down, mustahil. So you write it down, okay? Mustahil, okay? Mustahil. Now, you want to go back later and get that, and then you learn it means impossible. Well, because you're a beginner and you have other words that are more important, you can choose a word down here. Let's say you choose, I'll get one here, that uh, is um, Arab. Okay, you hear somebody say Arab. Arab. So you're like, you learn that this word means Arabs. So then you're going to want that one. Well, you don't want Mustahil. So you don't put a check by it. Later on, you can come back and review these words here. When I say review, I mean look through them, okay? Not study them, but look through them. And then you can take this later. So the ones you checked, you know that you already took. And those, you don't have, you don't pull them out, but you prioritize according to what you want, all right? So that is the review side, and that'll be done anywhere you're at. You always want to have your notebook with you so that you can write them down, all right? Now, here we go. We're going to get to the, the final draft side or your review side.
Okay, the first thing we did there was a rough draft or collection side. That is your collection side. I hope I didn't say review side before, but no, that's your collection side. Now, the first thing we do is let's just say that we have a piece of paper here, okay? Let's just say this is your notebook, all right? Now, most notebooks, because this is, I'm shrinking this, they have, you know, of course, they have line notebooks, and they're lined like this. Actually, these lines are going to be thinner because I, I did it smaller, okay? Like that, all right? Now, most of them are going to have at least 20 lines, okay, in your notebook. So, here's what I tell students. You can take a squiggly and divide it in half, and each page of your notebook becomes two parts, okay? So, you can put two lists on one page. And the list, how many are going to be in your list? Well, for reviewing, 7 to 10 or 5 to 7. Doesn't matter. But I would say no less than 5, and I would, I would probably go with 7. That's going to be your best bet. Um, if you're in intensive Arabic, you can go 7 to 10 or 12. Um, 5 to 7 if you're doing Arabic part-time and you just want to keep things down because what happens is these they're going to be reviewed on different days and it's going to increase the amount of work you're going to have is going to increase but it's not much your review every day will not take you more than 30 minutes in the beginning it'll actually be a lot less um, so 20 lines one through seven okay let's just say we have one through seven entries here so we will put we have one entry here all right one two three, four, five, six, and seven, okay? Now, up at the top of the page, before these entries, we will have some dates. And here's how the dates work. This is very important, okay? Let's just say you're starting on January 1st, 1-1. One, one. Now, I'm gonna do this according to the American dating system. So, we always put the month and then the day. So, it would be 1-1, one, one, okay? January 1, and then we're going to do the next day, 1, 2, okay, January 2nd. Then we're going to do two days January from this date. So it's always from the last day, two days, one day to here, one day here, two days, all right? And then we're going to do here, we'll do, let's say, uh, one week. So it'll be one from this. So it'll be one, um, that will be 11. Yes, 111. So this is seven days, okay? All right, and then we're gonna do another one. We're gonna do another week. So another seven days, all right? So now how do we have? We have five. Now you can leave it at five or you can go one step further. If you feel like you, you need this, you can all, you can choose for another day as well, which is a, basically another week. Okay, so then you can do one, uh, that would be uh, 25, yes. All right, so the 25th, so another seven days. All right, so you got six here. Let's say you're going with six review days. So it's gonna be either five or six review days. Then you're going to put a squiggly right here. What is that squiggly for? Let me tell you. These are review days. So everything you have written here, you'll review it. Okay? This will be your English. I mean, excuse me. This will be your Arabic here. Okay? And this will be your English. Right? That will be your English. So you'll have the word Arabic here, word, and the definition here. Okay? Then what you'll do, it's easiest, it's always easiest to guess what? To guess the English. Cover the Arabic, I mean, excuse me, cover the English and guess the English. So if I have the word here, if I have the word marhaba, okay, marhaba, all right, it's so much easier for me to cover the English and say marhaba. What does that mean? Mm, hello. Okay. So I have the word hello. I'm guessing hello. That would be on these two. These are two English. These are two dates where you'd cover in English. 
What's more difficult is to guess the Arabic. So then on this date, I will start guessing the Arabic. So I will cover this and I will say, Marha I would say, hello. How do I say hello in Arabic? Marhaba. All right. If I don't know it, it's fine. I just simply look at it and I say it a few times out loud and then I move on. No problem. But the key is you got two days for guessing the, Eng I mean, guessing the English. Two day, and then the rest of the days are for guessing your Arabic. So you cover it up, all right? Now, let's go right into, oh, by the way, that will be your first half here. And then you'll simply, the next day, you'll do it. You can just start from the day whenever you want to start reviewing that. Okay, so it'll be, let's say, the second. You're, do, you're doing this on the second. Let's say it's, this is a Sunday and this is a Monday. So the second. And you'll do the same thing, okay? Which is one day, you get this day, one day from that is one, three. Two days from that is one, five. What I do is simply go up here and just add one. One, 12. One, 19. One, 25, okay? So what I'll do though is I will then, once I review these days, let's say I got, I got a list here. All right, I've got a list here, and I've got a list here. Seven words, okay, definitions, Arabic, English, like that, okay? Now, let's say it is the 3rd of January, okay? The 1st of January, when I did this, I went ahead and crossed that out. I reviewed this, I crossed it out. Reviewed it, I guessed the, I guessed the, um, the English side, I guessed the English side, okay? And then on the 2nd of January, I, cr I reviewed this, and I reviewed the new list. So I crossed that out. Now, it's the 3rd of January. What am I going to be doing? Well, I look here. I scan it. No, I don't look at this list because it doesn't have the 3rd on it. I look at this list. So this is what I'll do is I'll review this, and then I will cross through. Now, tomorrow on the 4th, let's... Fast forward to tomorrow, I will review which one. I will only review this one. I won't review this one, okay? But as you go through your notebook, you'll be scanning the different list, and you'll see that on, let's say, let's say the 22nd of January, you'll have possibly two or three lists that you'll be going over, okay? Because these the probability increases that you'll have list with these dates as you keep going, okay? So these dates are for review. They're for you to scan, see the date, what's the date today? That's the list I'm gonna be doing. This scatters it out so that you're reviewing these, get them back in your memory. S scientific research has shown that if you can review something four, five, six times over a period of a month, all right, scattered, not every day, but over a period of a month, you will then be able, you have a very high likelihood of being able to get it in your head and memorize it. Okay, so let's take a look now at your review side entries. How are you going to go from your rough draft to your uh, review, which is your collection side, to your review side, to your final draft side? The way to do that, the best way to do it, let's just say that we already have our dates written. Let's just do that now so you can get a feel for it. One, one, and we do a one day ahead. So that's uh, past that is one, two, and then one, four, two days past that date. And then we're gonna go one week, which will be one eleven, and then another week after this date. And then finally, yet another week which I think we said was 25, okay? So, and then we have that squiggly. Don't forget the squiggly. So, we're going to make a list now, and uh, let's just say, we're gonna do this starting out for a beginner, okay? And then we're gonna go to uh, a little bit more intermediate level, okay? So, to start off, let's just say we use the word walid, walid, Okay, so we're going to write that here, Walid, 
Now, when you're a beginner and you don't have any alphabet and you don't really know how to make sentences, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves and try to start making, uh, creating sentences and all of that. We're just really trying to build our vocabulary from the beginning to get high frequency vocabulary. So this would be one of those uh, vocabulary words that's high, that is high frequency. What? Now let's say we don't have, we don't have the ability to write Arabic just yet. Okay, we're just in the first couple lessons. So here we have wanted. Wanted. That is your the meaning here. We're going to put boy. Okay. Now, every single time you look at a noun. Uh, especially in Arabic, because Arabic has many, many broken plurals. All right. In fact, the majority of Arabic vocabulary or nouns are broken plural nouns, meaning that they'll take a broken plural, they don't take a standard sound plural ending, which in Arabic would be uh, alif ta, all right, for feminine, and then, um, well, for masculine, it would be um, ya noon um, for most, most of the time. So, Anyway, here, what you're going to do is, you're going to have wanted there, and then you're going to put the plural, because you never, ever want to learn the singular noun without a plural. Anything, whether it's noun, adjective, um, those you're going to need to know the plural for them. So, how would the plural be? Well, this plural would be, oulad, oulad. And there it is. Okay? Oulad. Now, you know for nouns, you're always going to know. Nouns and adjectives. You're going to put the plural in Qawsin, which is parentheses in uh, the Arabic. Okay? So just for those of you who are, you know, speaking, you're able to write Arabic, let's say you were, it would look like this. All right? Okay, but now understand something here too. Um, when we're writing this down, um, we're not we're not doing it for um, we're doing it for what we're learning. We're doing it for the sound. Okay, so if you're studying MSA, this will not have a domain. It will have it will be different. It'll be a fetha with a sukun there, aulad. So we are doing this slightly different for whatever we're learning. So here we're learning um, dialect, which is uh, what we do here at C.G. Jordan is we teach a contemporary um, Arabic, which is a dialect, but a very intelligent dialect that also has a lot of mixed in MSA um, that we put in. But we're always going just for frequency is what we're looking for, high frequency first. All right, so there it is. Wallet, ulad. All right, so. There's your first entry. Now, let's say we let, we'll just add another one in there, all right? Um, let's go with girl, okay? Girl. So we have girl from our notebook. We took this from our rough draft side. We're sitting down with someone who knows how the, the, the Arabic grammar, not just anybody off the street, okay? Um, you want to have somebody who is intelligent and knows what they're doing, uh, particularly um, in this because you don't want to learn it incorrectly, especially with meanings. At a beginner stage, you could probably get away with um, using, let's say, a neighbor or something like that. You know, if they if they have, uh, let's say, a, at least a high school diploma or degree. Um, so this would be girls. Okay, so let's add. What it will be? Girls is bent. You know, well, girl is bent. So let's do bent. Okay, bent, and then we'll write the plural, which is banat. Okay, banat. Yeah, banat. All right, bent banat, and there is your singular and plural. Now, as you get going, you don't even need, I mean, really, in English, you don't need to put this there because you're already going to know that this is, in, 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 the, in the parentheses, that's going to be your plural, okay? So, 
Now, let's just say we're going to move in a little bit forward. You learn how to write the Arabic and you want to write something, uh, maybe just another step up more difficult. So this is what you're going to be doing. You're going to be kind of challenging yourself, but you don't want to go overboard, okay? So let's just say you learn the word for neighbor, all right? Neighbor, you want to learn the word for neighbor, okay? So you're going to write it here in Arabic, jar. There it is, jar. And then you're going to find out to make sure you know the plural is correct. Jiran. There's your plural. Jiran. Jar, jiran. So now you have the, um, the singular and the plural written in Arabic. Okay? Let's just say, though, you're intermediate level. Okay? So you want to do something like you want to say, my neighbor. So let's just make it my neighbor. Right? So this is uh, somebody who's, you, you're learning the attached pronouns, and you want to know that. So, you're going to say, Jari. So it would be Jari. Okay? Jari. Now, here, this is your focus. All right? Jari. Jar is your focus. Jar. So, you're not going to write, Jirani, my neighbors. Okay? You're going to just put Jiran. If you want to put Jirani, you can. But what I usually tell students is focus on this word, Jar. If you want to put Jari, you can. If you want to, I mean, um, Jari, you can, my neighbor. But you don't have to necessarily put Jirani here. Um, but to keep it consistent, let's just say you want to keep it simple. You want to keep it simple and everything's th with that different phrase. You can say, my neighbor, and then that's Jirani, my neighbors, okay? All right, so let's do another one. Um, Sayara, let's say you want to do car, okay? But you, you don't know the word for car very well, and you want to learn it, so you're going to write in car, but you, you've been learning grammar stuff and all that, and so now you want to say, um, the car um, is here, okay? So, you're going to get study with someone, you get with your instructor, and you'll write Sayara Hon, okay? Sayara Hon. The car is here, all right? Sayara hon. Notice, this is a little more, all these, are, this is getting more and more difficult. So I'm doing it for different levels. If you're a beginner, you're not going to write this, okay? Unless you have gotten to that level in your grammar where you're learning these. You already know hon, you just want to kind of learn little those simple sentences, okay? Now, if you want to make it more difficult, you can challenge yourself, that's great. But the focus is learning the vocabulary, okay? And then also learning new grammar. But you don't want to over, you, only you know what's too much. And that's really what I'm trying to say here is don't go so far that you have a sentence, you're, you're a very beginner, and now you're, you have like a complex or a compound sentence and half the words you don't even know. You only want to really have one word in the sentence that you don't know, whether that be a verb or an adjective or a noun. If I learn Sayada well and I'm doing another, uh, another, let's say I'm learning colors and I already know Sayada, I would say, I would do, I would do something like this. I would say Sayada. Is Sayara il? Um, all right, let's just say, okay, il Sayara il il beda, okay? Is Sayara? Oh, actually, it is like this. Il beda. All right. 
is Sayara al Beda. All right, so now you have the car, the white car, okay, the white car. So um, that is the, the, the thing you want to be doing here. The focus is on Beda. And here, all right, if you don't know the masculine, now this is feminine, okay? So now you want to say, all right, what's a masculine? Because now you have feminine and masculine. With this, sayarat, hon, sayara, hon, the, the plural we didn't put yet, the plural we need to put, so let me just do that now. Okay. All right. Sayarat is the plural. Now, you can also, if you really get good at this, and you already know, you get used to the plural, you can just put this with an elef tan that lets you know. Just add elef tan, and that's your plural. Sayara, sayarat. Um, uh, let's see, what, what would you ever would you say? Some other things, maybe like mokayif, um, mokayifat. Um, All right? So, any words, it would be like that. But in the beginning, we're just going to get used to it, and you can go shorthand as you keep going. Now, let's say that we don't, this is feminine. If we want masculine, we're going to put, actually, I'm sorry, for feminine, for feminine, you're going to do this squiggly. I mean, if this is, okay, that's your feminine, all right, if it's feminine. But this is actually plural, so we're going to keep it like this, all right. We'll keep it like this. But if I did feminine, if it was sayara, this was sayara here, and I did sayara here, I would put that squiggly there. So basically you have the parentheses for plural, the brackets here, okay, are going to be for masculine, all right? And then the squiggly is for feminine. So if you're in your sentence here, you have sayara, you already know, that's not your focus word. Your focus word is, is uh, abiyad, all right, or bela. All right, so, which is feminine. Now your masculine for this is abiyad, okay? Abiyad. Notice how I'm putting all of the harakat because this is really key for learning how to spell well. And not only, well, not really spell, but to pronounce well. So pronunciation is important. So you have abiyad. That lets you know this is the masculine for it. Because you, if, if you already know the masculine, fine, don't even put it. But usually we're always going to say beada uh, abiyat. So you have masculine, feminine here. All right? Let's say you have a verb. Like, uh, for example, um, um, uh, ija. Okay? Ija. All right? There is your verb ija. Okay? So you're learning, uh, you're learning verbs, and you know already you'd like to put something in there. Maybe make, let's make it a sentence, okay? Um, Ija Ahmed. Okay? Ija Ahmed. And then we already know the word Embarah. But we're going to put that too. So we've kind of made a nice sentence here. Embarah. All right. Ija Ahmed Embarah. Ahmed came yesterday. All right. So we'll write it here. Ahmed came yesterday. Okay. Now, what is it that we don't know yet? All right. We have Ija. So what do we need to know from Ija? Because it's a verb, you're always going to need to know, this is past tense, you're going to need to know the present tense. So present tense in Arabic is very important um, that you know that because you're not going to be able to tell just by this, especially if it's a form one verb like this is. It's going to be difficult. You need to put the present tense. Uh, I mean the present tense. If you have past tense, you put present tense. If you have present tense, you put past tense. So um, here is the, but here is the present tense. Okay, it is. Oh, excuse me, BG. All right, 
EG. And I'm putting all of the Hadakat there. Okay, now if you're a beginner and you're watching this video, you're not going to know what I'm writing here. That's fine. Don't get overwhelmed. But I'm just telling you here that if, if I'm writing this and I know the alphabet, I'm going to write in the alphabet because I need to practice writing and I need to get all those crutches, which are transliteration. Transliteration is like a crutch. Get rid of it, then we start to use the actual Arabic. So, Ija Ahmed and Bareh. Ija, he came. Ahmed, all right, is his name. Ahmed, he came. Ahmed came yesterday. I could say Ahmed, Ija, and Bareh, or Ija, Ahmed, and Bareh. It's all the same. And Bareh means yesterday. I already know these two words here. I don't know Ija, so that's why I'm putting it in there. And I made a nice little sentence. Ahmed came yesterday. Okay, so I have Ija, and then I have the present tense, which is BG. If I know some of this, like BG, if I know it, I won't put it in because I already know it. But typically, if I'm learning a new verb, I will always put it because you really won't know it. If it's uh, most verbs, it's hard to tell what they are um, unless you know the, the, the verb system very well. Okay, so that concludes our time here. What I'll be doing... Um, on this review is I will be covering up um, the, the, well, the English first, wanted, ulad, I'll be guessing boy, these two. Then I get to the fourth, I will be covering up the, excuse me, cover up the Arabic, sorry, and then I'll be guessing, um, yes, I'll be guessing the Arabic. So I'll say boy, wanted, ulad. Now, what happens if you get to a point where you, um, you're learning, let's say, uh, six, but you, six of the seven, but you don't know maybe one of these. Let's say Jada, you just can't get it in your head. All you do, if it's important to you, is you simply recycle it to another list and do it again. And that is how you master these um, these words. Remember, any language and every language is just made up of words. Words that are put into small clauses or sentences. Sentences which are put together to make paragraphs. And when you get to the advanced and superior level in a language or you become fluent, it just means that you're able to express your thoughts in paragraph form and long discourses. So we start from the very simple. We go more and more difficult with our notebook as we keep going. Shui shui, little by little, we keep turning it up and we don't even notice that we're getting better and better and better. But if you don't know the words, you don't know the language. And that's basically what we need to understand so that we can get motivated to do this system and to keep going. Now, as you go, you're going to notice, unless you're a mathematician and you can figure out how to take, let's say, Sunday off or Saturday off, this is a seven day a week thing. But it's not hard because it's really only about 30 minutes max. Even at the worst part of it, it's only about 30 minutes to review three or four lists. Okay? And you'll be reviewing at different stages. So one review would be maybe if one list would be a little harder, but another review would be easier because you basically already know it because you're coming into the last few here. So that concludes our notebook method. That was my shortest version possible. And uh, I want to encourage you to do it. We tell all of our students here at CG Jordan that they need to do it, that they must do it if they want to get uh, to, to really get results and to gain proficiency in the Arabic language. So, best of luck to you, best wishes to you in your study, and keep plowing forward. And that's it for now. Bye-bye.